Hey people, what's up? Kay Hart here. We're back. Uh, last week, I apologize. There was no video. I just, I was not feeling it. <laughs> There's no way. Um, but thank you to everyone who reached out to me and said that they hope I'm feeling better. And today we're going to be making some chill synth wave. And I would say like night drive synth wave, which I don't think is actually a real subgenre. Um, but who, who cares these days? Music is music. If it sounds good, it's good. So let's go ahead and make some night drive synth wave in Ableton. And as always, if you enjoy this video, like, subscribe, just hit all the buttons and yeah, let's make some music. All right, BPM is at 80 for this one. Let's go ahead and start with our bass. So let's grab a wave table and I'm just gonna make a bass real quick. And I made kind of that stereotypical detuned saw wave bass, that synth wave bass last time. I'm gonna do something similar here. So let's take this saw wave down an octave. And what I wanna show you is really cool if you didn't know this about Ableton's wave table. If I turn on the second oscillator here, you can actually drop in custom waveforms. So I'm gonna grab a kick drum sample and drop that right there. And you can see now that we actually have that waveform put into the wavetable. So I'm actually going to drop this down an octave as well. Let's pull the filter back. And let's go ahead and I'm gonna kind of leave this as is because I want more of a sustained bass this time. This is doing more of a chill synth wave. I'm not gonna do that rolling bass with the 16th note. So I want this to have a little bit of sustain and let's have that filter open a little bit. All right, maybe add a little bit of chorus here. All right, sounds pretty nice. Uh, the only thing I wanna do real quick is drop a utility on there and we're gonna check this bass mono. Maybe take it up to about 170-ish. All right, that sounds good. That sounds kind of sinister. I like it. All right, control shift in to add that MIDI clip. And let's just keep this simple. We'll do it in A minor today. Something like that. So you've got A1, 6, 7, 5. Sounds cool. Let's pop an EQ on there. Take that low cut off and let's add a high cut just like that. All right, next let's go ahead and add a simple kick and snare pattern. And I'm just using some samples from uh, one of the Oliver packs on Splice. Kick, snare, um, really, really nice, just ready to go. All right, so let's go ahead and add some chords. So we know that the bass is playing an A to start with, so there's an A minor chord. And then let's go ahead and come back down to the F because that is the next note our bass is playing. So we have that F major. And then it comes back up to the G. So too much tension there. What I'm gonna do is actually move this up to the octave as well. And I'm not even gonna use the fifth. And have it be like that. And then we come back down to the E. Okay, so I'm gonna have this A repeat here. And then let's have another thing I like to do sometimes is have one note that just constantly plays through the entire progression. And the E is a great choice because it's the fifth in the scale. So either the root note or the fifth is a good choice. Let's go ahead and add an E here and let's see. Sounds good. Let's grab an EQ real quick. Let's make sure there's 
uh, interfering with our base. And cut those a little bit. There's like one note that I'm hearing. Since we're going for that kind of lo-fi aesthetic as usual, I'm going to grab Ableton's amp and use that to kind of distort this a little bit. It's a little too crunchy. Let's turn it down somewhere like there. Just gives it some nice kind of grit. All right, let's go ahead and layer those with something that has just a little bit more kind of the like airy, higher end texture. So I'm going to hold control and drag those down to the next MIDI track. And I'm going to use this Cousteau's organ from Analog Lab. And it sounds like that. I'm just going to take out some of these, maybe the higher notes here. So we're not layering the entire thing, just some of the notes. Let's try that. All right, now those sound good really without even EQing them apart, which is exactly what you want to look for when you're layering sounds. I am going to put an EQ on here, of course, just because I want to rein in a little bit here. But they are already kind of occupying different areas of the frequency range, which is what you want when you're trying to layer, especially synths. All right, let's go ahead and toss a reverb on there as well. All right, next let's go ahead and add an ARP. And for this one, I'm using this Pluck preset from uh, the sound bank is called Photon. It's by Oblivion Sound Lab. I think I got this uh, during Black Friday for a pretty good deal, but they have some really, really nice um, presets for Arturia's uh, V collection. And this one's a really nice synthwave pack because usually I just use presets and kind of tweak them to my liking unless I'm specifically trying to make a certain sound. So this one works well enough for this. So let's go ahead and this is set to 16th notes. So let's see. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. Um, this is definitely a little bit darker because I'm using a lot of notes that aren't in the A minor chord. I'm using a lot of notes that are close together. And I think that kind of gives it like that really nice dark vibe. So I'm gonna just duplicate this over the entire chord progression and let's see how it sounds. Turn down the unison and maybe the delay a little bit. And I'm definitely going to put a reverb on there just to kind of push that back in the mix a little bit. And we'll throw an EQ8 on there real quick too. Just like boost those highs a little bit. All right, just to finish off the drums like quick and easy here, I'm gonna throw a percussion loop in here instead of just doing like the normal boring hi-hat loop. So I think this adds a lot to the beat rather than just having some hi-hats. So let's go ahead and tighten this up a little bit. So come down here, change that to the single arrow. And then we can make this really, really tight if we want here. I think somewhere right around there, though, is going to sound nice. All right, 
right, and let's grab an EQ for that real quick and a compressor because I'm going to side chain it to the kick. So let's just open the side chain and it's from the drum rack and it's from the kick. All right, I think the last thing to kind of finish this up would be like some sort of lead or melodic instrument. And um, the arpeggio definitely functions as a melodic section here. So what I want to do is I want to kind of interplay between that melody and a synth melody. But first of all, let's start arranging this. All right, so let's start off with control I and let's add eight bars to start with here. And what should we bring in first? How about, let's bring this and the arp back. Maybe that bass too. All right, so I think this is a good intro, but I need to grab an auto filter and filter this in. So I'm gonna do it for the bass and for the ARP as well. All right, so let's make that like really sinister to begin with here. So let's go ahead and automate this frequency filter. So again, to automate anything, just click on the parameter you want, hit A, it opens up your automation window here. And I'm just gonna click this in to kind of gradually start to sweep in and of course, you never wanna leave an auto filter turned on all the time unless you're going for that sound, but it definitely changes it because you have a cut here. So I'm gonna automate the on off as well. So here I want it to be on, here I want it to be off. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the ARP as well. So I'm gonna copy this auto filter and let's get rid of that one. Let's drop it on here. And what's cool about doing that is it actually copies and pastes the automation as well. And then let's have the auto filter turn back on here. And I'm gonna have it sweep back out. All right, and I think that's gonna do it for this one. Um, as always, I like to just keep things simple. I don't like to add a whole bunch of extra layers, extra complexity where it doesn't need it. The only thing that I'm gonna add to this while the beat is actually playing this time, I'm gonna record in a little synth solo. I have this section here cleared out for it just because I didn't want that ARP and the synth solo kind of competing since they're kind of two different melodic uh, elements. So anyway, if you enjoyed, please do remember to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Let me know what you wanna see in future videos and I will see you in the next one.